Hey there. So, um, I am back with the uh, first video on transition theory. Um, how to make loop loops, arcs, hard and soft transitions work for you. Um, yeah, uh, fair warning, um, I'm going to be recovering a lot of ground that I first covered in I think it was like tech blog number 62 or 63. I can't remember off the top of my head, but um, if you've been following these tech blogs a lot recently, then uh, uh, you might find um, a bunch of stuff that you've already seen. But if not, well, watch on. So to start off with, um, this is just going to be going over the basic vocabulary and uh, why we care about these things. Loops, arcs, hard transitions, soft transitions. What in God's name am I talking about? Well, um, at least in the case of, case of loops and arcs, I didn't make them up. Alien John did. Um, so if it doesn't make any sense, you can blame him. <laughs> um, so if, if you take um, common moves that we play around, like say an anti-spin flower, a cat eye, trichatra, which is really just technically another type of anti-spin flower, um, isolations, and extensions, um, these are all types of motion that mathematically we would refer to as epitrochoids. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that right, by the way. If anybody in, the, uh, in cyberspace out there is watching and knows how you actually pronounce it, please feel free to drop me a line and let me know. But um, they all possess common characteristics of being essentially spirograph-like patterns. That is, they're created by having multiple um, objects that are moving around in a circle interacting with each other. That's a really, really dumbed down and simplified explanation. If you want the full uh, definition, you can look it up on Wikipedia. But, um, John noticed something interesting, which was that if you want to switch between any two of these moves, there are specific regions that match up such that you can go between tricks with minimal effort and minimal change to the uh, amount of energy that the hand and the poi need to use to interact with each other. So say, for example, right here, I'm switching between a four-petal anti-spin flower and a cat eye. Um, if you think of the cat eye as being a two-petal anti-spin flower, and this of course being a four-petal anti-spin flower, they have a couple things in common, with, namely that they have petals and that they have regions between the petals. Um, in this case, I'm using the region between petals to switch between these two types of moves. John refers to this region as being an arc. Um, the regions wherein we get petals make good transitions into isolations. John's been referring to these regions as loops. And, as you can see, the loops also work to switch between the cat eye and the four petal as well, because these are elements that they all have in common, right? Um, one thing you'll notice is that all of the transitions that I've been doing so far are from a big circle into a littler circle. When I go from four petal to cat eye, I'm also beginning to trace almost like a spiral, going inward off a tangent point into a unit circle size circle with my hand, right? I can also do the same thing if I want to switch to Trichetra, like so. There's also a transition point here, not just to switch into smaller or larger circles that are tangential but concentric with your original circle, but also a circle that is right next to that circle. Those of us who've been playing with, uh, with the unit circle grid are very used to doing this. If, say, we're switching between a cat eye and an extension, for example. You'll note that in performing this motion, I never actually need to stop either my hand or the poi at any place along either path. They, sp they f flow very smoothly together into each other. The same thing is true no matter how big an anti-spin flower I'm operating with over here. If I want to, I can switch it into an extension over here. An extension is essentially a non-stop arc. 
isolation, a non-stop loop. So as we switch between these, we get lots of opportunities to switch the character of the tricks that we were playing with, right? Now, everything I've just demonstrated, I would consider to be a soft transition. Um, how I'm defining a soft transition is it is any move, in, or rather any transition, between two uh, different moves that have different characteristics, wherein neither the hand nor the poi needs to arrest its momentum to get there. So, cat eye versus extension. Into spin flower versus cat eye. You'll note my hand and poi never ever stop moving. What if I do want to stop one or the other moving, or both moving for that matter? Well, then we get into the realm of what I'm calling hard transitions. Uh, for example, if I were to do a forearm extension and float up on each side, I would consider this to be a hard transition of both hand and poi. Both of them come to a complete rest on either side and then reverse direction. This has the same properties as the soft transitions in that you can change the size of the circle that you're uh, coming in and out of. So for example, if I'm working with a full arm extension, I can switch it into, say, static spin if I wanted to and use that as a hard transition of both hand and poi, in which case I'm doing a pair of upstalls, which flow very nicely into switching between static spin and extension, right? What if, on the other hand, I wanted to um, use a hard transition of both hand and poi to switch into a unit circle, size circle. Well, in that case, the stall comes right back at me. You could think of this as being analogous to switching between isolation and extension as you go around the circle. And you'll notice that as the poi comes back at me, my hand is beginning to rotate around in that unit circle size circle on either side, right? But what about if I want to do a mixed transition? That is, what if I want to do a hard transition with my hand, a soft transition with the poi? So glad you asked. Once again, let's start with our full, uh, our, our long arm extension here. And as the poi continues to spin around in what to you guys is going to look like a counterclockwise direction, I'm going to switch the orientation of my hand. I'm going to stop it completely at the bottom, move it back up clockwise, and then back down counterclockwise. And what emerges is the C shaped cap that we all know and that some of us have begun to get really sick of. Likewise, if I want to do a hard transition with poi but a soft transition with my hand, I have the opportunity to do a move like this where the poi switches from clockwise to counterclockwise as it goes around the circle, but the hand never changes which direction it's going. And for the most part, it doesn't change it's, uh, it, it never completely rests momentum. I need to change my timing a bit as I come through here, but then again I need to change my timing when I'm switching from cat eye to a four petal flower as well. I would consider this pattern also to be a cap, but there is likely to be some controversy over that. And uh, we'll save that for the comment section. So, that is loop, arc, hard transition, soft transition, and uh, mixed transition. And before I forget, some of you guys may be asking about static spin. Um, I'm considering static spin to be both loop and arc, or neither. And I'll explain why next time.
For now, though, um, thank you guys for watching and for sitting through that patiently. And uh, I promise there are more goodies to come. So, I'll see you all very soon.